Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary peoples. This is Bronson's... Okay. My name is Necessary Fantasy Football Talk for Thursday, November 3rd, 2022. We're just going to jump right into it. This is the running back spikes and yikes. I've said everything I have to say in my wide receiver video from like an hour ago. So if, if you want the updates on my life, you can watch that. Or at least the first six minutes or so. Um, <clears throat> but I want to get this done and uploaded before the game start because I want to get this out of the way for, for the games. But I don't have any running back updates to, to talk about like I did with the wide receivers. Um, but um, these rankings are not great. So we're going to talk about it. But here's your top 30, your Running back ones for week nine. We have number one, we got Austin Eckler versus the Falcons. Number two, we got Alvin Kamara versus the Ravens. Number three, we got Derrick Henry versus the Chiefs on Sunday night at Kansas City. With the Chiefs coming off a bye. Number four, we got Josh Jacobs at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Number five, we got Aaron Jones at the Detroit Lions. Number six, we got Travis Etienne versus the Oakland Raiders. I need my pen. Number seven, we got Joe Mixon versus the Carolina Panthers. Eight, we got my boy Dalvin Cook in Washington, or in Landover, Maryland, actually. Landover, Maryland. I don't know why uh, I wanted, <laughs> yesterday when I was talking about the quarterbacks and tight ends, I was saying Loud Out in Virginia. That's not even <laughs> close. Or Loud Out in Maryland. I don't even know what I was saying. But it wasn't Landover, Maryland, which is where they play, um, which is freaking empty farm land in the middle of nowhere um an hour outside of dc or something something like that i don't remember exactly where but it's, it's definitely definitely weird because it usually it's like in the city or in like a suburb or something but this washington stadium is literally in the middle of farmland there's nothing around there <laughs> and then Nine, we got Kenneth Walker at the Cardinals. Ten, we got Damian Pierce versus the Eagles tonight. <clears throat> Running back two is 11 through 20. We got Ramondre Stevenson versus the Colts. 12, we got Miles Sanders at the Texans tonight. 13, we got Leonard Fournette versus the Rams. 14, DeAndre Swift versus the Packers. 15, we got Raheem Mostert at the Bears. 16, we got Devin Singletary at the Jets. 17, we got David Montgomery versus the Dolphins. 18, we got a presumably healthy, presumably going to play James Conner versus the Seahawks. 19, we got Michael Carter versus the Bills. 20, we got Tyler Algier making his first appearance in the top 20 after a big week. He finally showed some passing game involvement last week, which was great for his, you know, fantasy usefulness, fantasy utility. So Tyler Algier versus the Chargers at number 20. You're running back threes, 21 through 30. We got Deontay Foreman versus the Bengals in Cincinnati. 22, we got Jamal Williams versus the Packers. We got two lines running backs at 14 and 22. Pretty close and together in the rankings. 23, we got Antonio Gibson, who seems to be the running back one in Washington now that Carson Wentz is not the quarterback anymore. Um, against the Vikings. 24, we got Khalil Herbert versus Dolphins. We got David Montgomery at 17. Khalil Herbert at 24. I, I love how the rankings are reflecting the running back by committee in Chicago, finally. 25, we got Damian Harris versus the Colts. 26, we got Clyde Edwards Alaire versus the, Tex the Titans. I mean, so according to the experts, Clyde Edwards Alaire is still the running back to play in Kansas City. 27, we got Eno Benjamin versus the Seahawks. 28, we got AJ Dillon at the Lions. 29, we got Caleb Huntley versus the Chargers. So both Falcons running backs are in the top 30. That's, it's presumed that Cordero Patterson is going to miss this game in week nine. <clears throat> and then at 30, we got newly acquired Naheem Hines of the Bills at the Jets. So Naheem Hines, his fantasy um, usefulness has improved with his trade, despite the fact that the backfield in Buffalo is a little bit more crowded than it was in Indy. 
um, Naheem Hines is going to have a real role, a consistent role in Buffalo, we think. So he's going to be a weekly flex candidate. So my yikes here. Um, starting with Derrick Henry at three, I think he's <laughs> – Derrick Henry is obviously tremendous, tremendously talented, but I just feel that this game is going to not be in the Titans' favor. Uh, I know they're still going to – you know what? I'm changing it. Derrick Henry's fine at three. The Titans are going to be could be down by four touchdowns. They're still going to give the ball 25 times to Derrick Henry. They don't care, which I love because I don't understand why all these teams, when they fall behind, they stop running their normal offense and they start just passing the ball all the time. When you know you have an elite running back, your best offense is to give it to your elite running back. And you just stop because you try to catch up, but. Shouldn't you want to run your best offense to try and catch up? I, I never understood it. So <laughs> the Titans are going to run the shit out of the ball, whether they're four touchdowns down or not. So I'm changing this to Derrick Derek Henry's fine. I'm changing Aaron Jones. Okay, Aaron Jones and the Packers uh, don't seem to be on the same page right now. None of the – I came into the season really high on both Packers running backs, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. I thought they'd both be weekly top 20 plays. That's not the case. A.J. Dillon is barely – even ownable right now um so he's a low end flex 28 this week i'm fine with that Nakings, i'm fine with where he's at um, but aaron jones being a top five guy i don't see it the packers are not getting the ball to either one of these guys enough and uh i think this is a game where Packers are going to throw it more because of how bad the Lions' secondary is. So, I mean, yes, Aaron Jones is going to be involved in the passing game, but not enough. Unless something changes. Unless something massively changes this week. I don't see Aaron Jones in the top five. I might still have him back into the running back ones, high end running back two this week just because of the matchup, but not top five. So I'm, I'm yanking him a little bit. Forget what I said about Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's fine. And then Damian Pierce at 10 against the Eagles. This is a game where everybody, including myself, are kind of anticipating the Texans are going to get their asses blown out. So that doesn't bode well for Damian Pierce um, to see a lot of work. There's still a possibility that he could get a big, long touchdown gain. He's been prone to do that this year. But um, can't really. it's hard to truly really expect something like that. So I have Damian Pierce more as a running back too. So I'm yiking him out of my top 10. I'd like to say put DeAndre Swift in the top 10 uh, because he's just so, so tremendously talented. Uh, but he did not look good last week. He may not, he still may not be 100% against the Packers this week. So I'm, I'm good with him being where he is at 14. I think I'm just going to move Ramondre Stevenson up from 11 to 10. Just, just flip-flop Ramondre and Damian Pierce. That's that's how it's going to go. That's, just, that's the easiest way to do it here. Although I'd probably move Miles Sanders and DeAndre Swift up to 11 and 12 with Damian Pierce 13, 14, something like that. <clears throat> My next yike... It's going to be Michael Carter. He's at 19 this week against the Bills. Um, his involvement in the passing game bodes well for him in, in a matchup where this could be a shootout. Um, but I just think I think James Robinson's a more talented running back. I think Jacksonville acquired James Robinson for a very specific reason, and it's because they don't believe in Michael Carter. Um, James Robinson's a more proven back. Hopefully, presumably, he's going to have a bigger role this week. Uh, so I have... It's hard for me to trust Michael Carter as a top 20 play um, this week. He's more of a – because of the pass catching, um, but they both are good pass catchers. Um, I think they're both flex plays this week. Um, neither, neither one of them a top 20 play for me. My next yike in the running back three range, we're going to go Damian Harris. Damian Harris, ever since – uh, his injury 
uh, and the emergence of Ramondre Stevenson as a bell cow. Damian Harris is as um, with the touches he's gotten hasn't done shit with them. So I don't like Damian Harris at all. He's out of my top 30. And then Eno Benjamin. If James Conner plays, Eno Benjamin's role is going to decrease very significantly. Uh, and I haven't, you know, Benjamin hasn't really impressed me that much with the extra workload he's got um, to for the Cardinals to, you know, want to keep giving him 10, 15 touches a game. Um, I don't think he's talented enough for that. He's going to go back to a secondary role. So he's out of the flex conversation for me as well. Um, unless James Conner doesn't play, then we can put, you know, Benjamin back in, you know, He's a 27 now. Put him back in that 20 to 25 range where he's a high-end flex because of the workload, um, not necessarily because of the production. So, my spikes. Let's get to it. Dante Foreman, 21. Pretty easy for me to move Michael Carter out of the top 20, put Dante Foreman in. Dante Foreman's going off a huge week. Um, and if the Panthers want to have any chance to continue to be successful, this season and win some games, they're going to need to rely on Dante Foreman like they did last week. So Dante Foreman, for me, is a top 20 play, even though he's at 21. Not a, not making a huge change there, but I am moving him up into the top 20, so I'm going to consider him a spike. My next spike, a bunch of guys outside the top 30, so... Um, Okay, so at 31 and 32, we have both Colts running backs. We have Deion Jackson at 31 and Jonathan Taylor at 32. Can you, can you believe that Jonathan Taylor is ranked at 32? Uh, it seems likely that he's not going to play this week, so that's why he's so low. Um, Deion Jackson, we saw what he could do um, when he was the, he got all that work well, the last time Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines were pulled out. So Deion Jackson, for me, at 31, <sighs> moves into the top 30 because I'm moving... You know Benjamin and Damian Harris out, so Deion Jackson moving into the top 30, um, and he's a really good play. If he's available on your waiver wire, you should get him, especially if you have Jonathan Taylor. And then the 35, James Robinson, like I said earlier, kind of spoiled it with the Michael Carter stuff. James Robinson's a flex play for me. Again, I'm moving Damian Harris out, and you know Benjamin out, so I'm putting Deion Jackson in, and I'm putting. James Robinson in. Um, and if Jonathan Taylor does play, then Damian, Damian Deion Jackson out, Jonathan Taylor in. So, uh, And then 41 42, we got the Ravens running backs, Gus Edwards and Kenyon Drake. Um, neither one has looked super impressive so far this year, but they're both going to get a big workload if, uh, well, even if they both play, they're still going to get a good workload to be in the low end flex conversation. Uh, there's some concern. <laughs> that Gus Edwards may not play. That's why he's down at 41, I'm assuming. I'm presuming. So, um, if Gus Edwards doesn't miss time, Kenyon Drake moves into not necessarily the top 30 because Kenyon Drake's not very good, hasn't really done anything. Um, he gets enough volume to be in the flex consideration, but does not produce enough with the volume he gets to really be someone we're going to start, probably. So, um, he'd be a high end, he'd be in the high 30s for me if Gus Edwards misses time. Because um, I don't really know who else I'd move out of the top 30. I mean, honestly, Caleb Huntley led the Falcons in rushing attempts last week, so it can't be him. I'd have to say A.J. Dillon. I'd, pro yeah, I'd probably. I might play Kenyon Drake over A.J. Dillon this week because A.J. Dillon hasn't done anything. and He's not really getting enough touches. Uh, Kenyon Drake will get more touches than A.J. Dillon. He's getting more yards. Neither one of them is a very appealing play to me. Uh, but I'm also a person who I always make sure I got good backs. I draft I draft those backs early. I draft, always try to draft three of my first five picks so that I don't have to worry about having to play guys like A.J. Dillon I'm Kenny Drake in my flex because I get guys like, you know, just taking three names out of a hat. I'll give you an um, example of a team I did draft. I got, so in one draft, I went running back one, two, three. I got Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Aaron Jones. 
So, you know, I'm Aaron Jones is my flex every week. Or another league, I got Dalvin. I think it's Dalvin, Mixon, and Saquon, maybe. I know it's Dalvin and Saquon. I don't remember who the other one is, but I know I have three backs. I went backs one, two, three. Saquon was my third back, and he has been a monster this year. Uh, so Saquon has been my weekly flex. No, I don't have, in most situations, I don't have to worry about choosing two unappealing running backs as my flex because I load up on them early and I go with high-end wide receivers. You know, wide receiver twos, wide receiver threes who are young and potentially could break out as my wide receiver options and then don't typically play wide receivers in my flex. Typically, I mean, sometimes I do bad my weeks or sometimes just, you know, the running backs underwhelm and I don't really trust them for a week, so I'll go wide receiver, but it's not very often. Then I play a wide receiver in the flex. So, but if you are in the situation where you need to go A.J. Dillon or Kenyon Drake in the flex, I would presume... <laughs> I'd go Dylan if Gus Edwards plays. I would go Drake if Gus Edwards doesn't play. Anyways, enough of my rambling. Relatively short video, I guess, probably because I didn't do a whole lot of talking in the beginning, right? I just jumped right into it. So, um, yeah, I'd still got nothing, nothing to say. Um, wait for it to get dark before I go out and do any... Ubering, I will not be watching tonight's game. Probably won't watch any football at all this weekend because I got some, I got to work Sunday. I got to catch up, and also I have a one of my friend's birthday parties in the early afternoon in Portland. So, I mean, I might get to watch. I think I, I do kind of want to watch the Sunday night game. I want to watch Chiefs Titans. I might get to watch like the you know the morning a little bit of games in the morning, but I'm not gonna watch them. I'm not going to spend all day watching football like I normally would on a Sunday. And, um, yeah, I'll probably just watch the Sunday night game, I'm sure. Because my friend's thing starts at 1. There's no way we're still going to be there at 5.30. I'm not still going to be there at 5.30. I'm not enough of an extrovert to be socializing for four and a half hours <clears throat> with a bunch of people I don't know. So, um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I uh, haven't been to the movies in a while. Maybe I'll go catch a movie. I don't know if anything new came out this, week, this last weekend, though. I think it's still just Black Adam and Ticket to Paradise, which I saw. Both okay movies. Actually, Black Adam was really good. Ticket to Paradise, okay. Um, I'll have to check. I'll have to check. Maybe I'll go to AMC. AMC usually has different things. AMC uh, has the much more comfy, you know, experience. The much more comfy vibe. Uh, it's just cost me personally a lot more money because I don't get it for free so but AMC is really close walking distance alright I'm done you guys have a good day have a good weekend good luck with your matchups if you're playing me I hope I kick your ass and uh, I have a couple of big matchups in my in this week actually I got a uh one league, I'm sitting in sixth place. I know, I know there's still a lot of time left, but it's a 16 playoff. I'm sitting in sixth. The guy I'm playing is uh, tied with me. He's in the seventh spot also, but he also, he's also the guy who I faced in the finals last year, and he beat me. So I want to I want to beat him. I'm going to get my revenge, solidify my playoff spot. And then another one um, was one of my friend's wives, who she's only been playing a few years, but ever since she started playing, she's kind of had my number, which is rare for any of my friends to you know really have a rival with me because I usually kick their asses but she for some reason um, always targets a lot of the same players that I want and she always drafts like right in front of me so she snipes me a lot and, and she just ends up she's got a eight, her team they know right now so I gotta beat her I gotta beat her this time she's got the undefeated streak has got to end and uh, I'm on a two game winning streak starting out like one in five I'm three and five. I need to win. So hopefully both of those matchups I can win. She's having a really good year. I'm really proud of her, really happy for her. Um, because she's again, she's using a lot of the players that I wanted 
she always does she always does that's not she doesn't know she doesn't do it on purpose she doesn't know she's doing it um we haven't had a conversation about it but i'm telling you right now for those of you who watch that she takes a lot of the same players that i'm targeting and she always drops like one or two spots from me so she's always sniping me it's aggravating <laughs> but so it's good to know that if i drafted the team that i wanted to draft that she didn't draft i'd be a no too but um yeah, I'm really happy that she's she's she loves fancy football. I, I, that's the kind of spouse that I want if I ever get married, which I doubt I will. But if I ever get in a serious relationship, I want a girl who plays fantasy football with me and like gets really into it. Like I don't want her to just play reluctantly because she wants to be a part of you know what I am into. I want her to enjoy it, and I know that this girl. I know that she's into it, and she's she's good at it. She's been good at it since since uh, you know the beginning. Um, I think your husband helps her out a lot. But her husband isn't really all that great. Uh, I think, hopefully, she takes. I think. I think she does take a little bit of advice from me early on. I did help her out, coach her a little bit, but um, yeah, she just always seems to know who I want, is and she takes them, <laughs> and she usually has a good team and beats me. Um, although I did knock her out of the playoffs last year think she beats me in the regular season i take her in the playoffs it's like the san francisco 49ers and the rams like the 49ers own the rams in the regular season come playoff time though me the rams <laughs> we went to the games um yeah i guess wow i ran way longer than i thought um all right i'm ending this mercifully i'm so sorry that i rambled for six minutes but i, I, mean, I thought it was a good story and i seem you know i told it i told it well i was, in, I was enthusiastic about telling it um, it's it sucks. I don't, I don't like losing. I'm, I'm a bit of a sore. I'm a very much a sore loser. Um, people know this about me. Uh, but I'm happy when it's someone I know, someone who I kind of helped out a little bit. And so like, uh, it's bittersweet. It's, it's bittersweet. If it was the playoffs, it'd be a different story because I'd have to live with that loss all off season, uh, and those bragging rights would be to them. But you know, I want them to succeed not at the expense of me you know so it's like i don't know it's tough but good for her but it's time for her to lose so hopefully i can i can give her her first loss and uh yeah it'd be nice all right peace love and nacho fries have a good day